Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis, and welcome to episode 59 of my weekly show. Now, this week I thought I'd do things just a little bit different, and rather than showing you one single technique, I want to go through the entire retouching workflow, taking this out of camera picture all the way through to the final print ready image. Now, before we go on with the retouching, there's just a few things to mention. The first one is the lighting. Now, I wrote a post over on my blog explaining not just the how, but the why this picture was lit in this particular way. And I'm gonna put a link to that in the uh, description section of this video. So if you haven't seen it already, make sure you check that out. Secondly, uh, there's gonna be quite a few Photoshop techniques, obviously, that I'll be going through, and I'm gonna go through them fairly quickly. Now, I've already recorded videos for most of them over the last, I don't know how many weeks, so what I'm gonna do is, rather than go into detail about them, I'll put links to those specific videos as well within the uh, description so that you can check out those techniques in more detail. And finally, we're also gonna be using third-party plugins. You're gonna see how I use third-party plugins like Topaz and also the Nick Collection by Google and mix them in with Photoshop techniques, but still keep the retouching workflow completely non-destructive. Now, there's a lot to get through in a short space of time, so let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is use a couple of filters. So because I want to work non-destructively, I'm gonna convert our layer over here in the layers panel to a smart object so that we can actually go back and change the filters if we need to at a later stage. So we're gonna to go to the filter menu, choose convert for smart filters, but that's grayed out at the moment. So and that's the reason for that is because our background layer here is currently locked. So I'm gonna click on the padlock icon, then we come over to filter and convert for smart filters. So once that layer has been converted and we can see that by the little icon now in the bottom right of the thumbnail, then I'm gonna to go to the filter menu, choose Topaz Labs, and we're gonna use Topaz Detail 3. And I really like this uh, plugin because of the way that it really adds kind of like a texture and a grunge to the skin and also to the clothing. Now, once we go into the actual interface of Topaz Detail, and this kind of goes for all of the plugins, I would say, from Topaz, the view you get, first of all, shows your whole picture. And the effect of that is that it kind of compresses what the plugin is doing, so the look doesn't look that good. So to get a more sort of clear understanding and a better preview, you're better off zooming to 100%, and you can do that by clicking on the magnifying glass in the top right hand corner. When I click to that, it takes me to a 100% view and then the preview over on the right hand side, I can drag the preview box around here to go to an area of the image that I wanna work on. Now the settings I've tended to use here is mainly what I always do in Topaz Detail and you can see here, I only work on the small details, the small details boost and the medium detail sliders, just those three. Although there's a lot more you can do in here, this is generally all I ever do and the small details details is moved over to the right. The small details boost is moved to the right, but not quite as much. And the medium details again is moved to the right, but even less. So it's only these three top sliders here that I tend to move. We can see a preview before and after of what this effect does now by clicking down on our picture shows us the before. And when we release, it shows us after. So before, after, before, after. I'm happy with that. Then we're gonna click OK to send this back out now into Photoshop. Once we've done that, I'm gonna use another filter now, and this is from Google, and it's the Nick Color Effects Pro 4. So we go to Filter, Nick Collection, and we go to Color Effects Pro 4. Now again, because we've applied this to the smart object, we're also using this filter here as a smart filter so we can make changes later on. But the one I'm gonna use is this detail enhancer here over on the left-hand side. And you can see over on the right-hand side now, we have a number of options that we can kind of refine the look. And we've got the radius here, we've got fine, normal, and large. And there's a slight difference in how much kind of detail it brings out in our picture. I'm gonna click on fine because I quite like that. But we've also got these sliders that we can kind of be finesse the look if you want, but I'm gonna leave it as it is, pretty much by the default, and then click OK. All right, so now we're back into Photoshop. We can see the effect of what those two filters have done for us already by coming to the layer mask that's attached to the smart filter and just clicking on the eye icon to turn it off and on, off, and on. And it's pretty much how I want it. If we zoom in, we can see that it's added a little bit of noise and texture in there. And that's fine for me for this kind of picture because it is not supposed to be a beauty picture. I want this to have some real grit and grunge in there. 
All right, so the next thing I think I'm going to do is a little bit of dodging and burning to enhance the actual image. So I'm gonna add a blank layer. I'll go to the Edit menu, choose Fill, and from the Contents Use drop down here, I'm gonna choose 50% gray and then change the blend mode over in the layers panel here to soft light. Now I'm not gonna cover how we do the dodging and burning because there is a video that I've already done and if you check in the description of this video, you'll see a little link to it. So definitely, definitely check that out. But just to give you a very, very quick overview, I'm gonna go to use the dodge tool over here in the toolbar on the left hand side. In the top here where we have our options, range is set to mid-tones, exposure 10% because we always like to start off with a small amount and build up and then the Protect Tones checkbox has got a little tick in it. And all I'm gonna do is just work around the image. I'm gonna brighten the highlight areas and darken down the shadow and mid-tones. And by doing that, it's gonna add a, a lot more kind of uh, contour and dimension to the image. Okay, so jumping forward just a few minutes now, I've finished off with the dodging and burning, and I've also renamed the layers over in the layers panel. If I turn the dodge and burn layer on and off, you can see the effect there that's having on our picture. In fact, let's just zoom in a touch so we can see the guys. If I turn it on and off, you can see the effect on their skin. And we move down here, we can see the effect it's had on the clothing. It's not a lot been done there, but just enough to make it have a little bit more interest and a little bit more dimension. Now at this stage, when I look at the picture, it seems to me that the contrast in the overall picture looks a little bit flat. And that's because we use that enhancer uh, plugin from Nick. Although that really does bring out the detail, it can also brighten the image as you can see, and it also flattens out the contrast. So to add some back in, I'm gonna click on the original layer, go to the filter menu, and this time I'm gonna use another plugin called uh, Clarity, again from Topaz. Now when we're in the Topaz Clarity uh, dialog box here, again over on the right hand side we've got some sliders. I'm gonna take the micro contrast over to the right hand side. There's no kind of like exact numbers here, it's purely by sight, but again, I bring the top slider over the most, the second slider to the right, not quite so much, and the third slider over just a little bit as well. And the great thing is because we're using these as smart filters, we don't have to get it exactly right right now. We can also change it later on. But let's just have a look in the top left here, click to see the before and after. So on the left, we can see before, on the right, we can see after. A lot more contrast, really liking the look of that. So let's now click OK and send this back over into Photoshop and carry on working. Okay, so now that we're back in Photoshop, let's just click on the uppermost layer. We're now gonna add in a light source, and I, I kinda call this one the world's simplest lighting effect, because it really is very, very simple, but very, very effective. And it's kind of like the one that we've already got in the picture here, which is one you can see in the top right-hand corner, where we've actually got some of the light coming from the studio lights during the photo shoot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a blank layer. I'm gonna get a brush, making sure that my foreground color over here on the left hand side is white and I'm going to choose a box standard simple soft edged brush 100% sorry 0% hardness let's just click it to make sure there's no settings and then I'm going to click at 100% opacity right in the middle of the picture then I'm going to go to edit oops edit and free transform and I'm going to resize this really really big let's just zoom out just a touch make it nice and big something like that press enter or return zoom in, and then with my move tool, just drag it to the top part of the picture. So now we've got another light source, and I think we'll probably leave it to something like that. World's simplest lighting effect, on and off. Now because this is a very grungy, dirty kind of atmosphere here, where it's a boxing room with lots of dust going on around the lights, we'll add in some of that dust. So we're gonna to go to File, Place Embedded, and on my computer here I've got a number of files that I call Thingies. Again, this is all done in a video which I'll leave a link in the description to. But Thingies Large, click Place to put that into my working document. Now I need this to kind of fill the screen here, so I might just resize it like so, something like that is fine. And then to have these kind of like dust specks now appear within the light source, we'll just change the blend mode from normal to screen. So it gets rid of the dark areas and leaves the brighter areas. And you can see that we've got all these kind of great effects of dust up in the top part of the picture. Now we don't want it in the bottom part. So all we're going to do is add a layer mask and then we're gonna get a gradient from over in the toolbar with a black foreground color. We'll click on the gradient and we're gonna choose the second one along, which 
which is this foreground transparent. So now we can click and drag upwards multiple gradients to remove the effect off the lower part of the picture to something like that. Now let's just zoom in, make sure none of those dust, uh, none of those dust bits are all over their faces. And I don't like it when it appears directly on the face like we can see on Steve here. So I'm just going to add another blank layer and I'm going to use my spot healing brush, but making sure that in the top of the screen here we've got the options it says sample all layers so now on this blank layer I can actually use the spot healing brush just to get rid of the ones that I don't want and there's a couple on mic get rid of that one there and get rid of that one there and that's perfect does a great job there we've got lots of dust of course we don't have to have it quite so dominant as that we can click on the thingies layer here and just use opacity just to reduce the effect, overall effect there because we just want it so there's a few little dust specks within the light source in the top left and top right of our picture let's double click on the hand tool and we can now move on to the next part Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is desaturate the picture. I don't want it to be quite so saturated, mainly in the red. So let's just rename this uppermost layer here to light. And then I'm going to press D on my keyboard to set my foreground and background to their default colors of black and white. And then I'm going to add a gradient map adjustment layer. And already by default, it gives us a pretty good black and white conversion. But I want to kind of refine that just a little bit more. And again, I've done a video on this. I'm going to click on the gradient itself to bring up the gradient editor. I'm going to increase the blacks and we'll bring up the highlights to touch as well and then I can control the mid-tones by this little slider here that kind of like this little pointer I mean that got brought in to the to the uh, gradient as well so we'll drag that to the right hand side click OK so it's got a really nice kind of black and white conversion now and I think it, this picture would actually work in black and white but I only want to use uh, maybe around about 40% of that so we'll change the opacity of this gradient map adjustment here down to maybe 40% so we turn that on and off we can see how we've reduced the saturation there but I think by doing that it again adds to the overall feel and mood of the picture being very gritty and grungy. Okay, so now we're going to really add to the overall mood and feel of the picture by altering the colouring. And we're going to do that by revisiting the Colour Effects Pro 4 NIC plugin from Google. Before we do that, I'm going to convert all of these layers now into a smart object because this colour effect needs to be added to the picture in its current state with all the retouching done. So rather than creating a merged or stamp layer which is working destructively, we're going to basically hold down my shift key with the uppermost layer selected I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on the bottom layer so they're now all selected and then from the fly out menu in the top right of the layers panel we're going to go to convert to smart object now that actually can take quite some time to convert all those layers because it's not only converting the layers but it's also having to kind of work on all those adjustments that we've made within those different plugins but eventually you're going to end up with one single layer from the layers panel I'll just rename that one now to retouch part one so it knows all the bits we've done so far and now we're going to head over and use the filter nick collection and go into color effects pro 4 and this is where we're going to start adding in some of the color now, when we get into the Color Effects Pro 4 kind of dialog box, you're probably going to see something like this. Now, before you start to panic, nothing has gone wrong here. This is actually exactly what you want to see because we're working non-destructively and all these transparent pixels around your picture is basically the area that includes the rest of that light source that we added in. So all these transparent areas, we, if you remember, we dragged it outside of our picture and it needs to have this much space around Around it now to include all of that light source so that later on if we want to in the retouch we want to move that light we can do because it's still available to us so this is what you want to see but when we're in the properties dialog box now you obviously can't be applying effects with the picture this small so what you want to do is you want to zoom in a little bit so I'm going to zoom in to somewhere around about 25% so now I can see more of my picture and I've still got some transparent pixels around it but I'm ignoring those I only want to look now at the picture itself. Now, when we're in Color Effects Pro 4, there are so many different settings and filters we can apply over on the left hand side that can affect the color of our image. Cross processing is one that I love, cross balance, so many of them. 
So what I'm actually done is I've already made one that I like that kind of gave the look that I wanted. And that's a great thing about using this plugin is you can make up looks and you can save them. And I've got one here that I've renamed to Kickboxer Blue Brown. Now it's going to say that it will replace all the settings that we've currently got. And yes, we want to get rid of those because I want to show you the look that I've now gone for. So this is the look that I want. I can click OK, send this back over into Photoshop. And again, we're still working non-destructive. So I can still come back in and play around with this color if I don't quite like it. Now you can see that once we go back into Photoshop, we don't see those transparent pixels all around us. So we come back to normal. So like I said, when you see all that in the dialog box, don't worry about it. It's exactly what you want to see so that you're continuing to work non-destructively. It's a really good thing. Now, apart from cropping the picture to exactly how you want it to be, you could actually say that you're now finished. But there's one extra little thing that I want to do, uh, and I do this to quite a few of these kind of pictures, and that's adding this cartoonish kind of painterly textured feel to it. And the only thing with doing that is you have to do it destructively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a merged or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack. And we can do that by going select all, edit, copy merged and then edit and paste and that puts a merged layer at the top of the layer stack now i need another copy of that so i'm going to press command or control j and the first copy i'm going to call look and the second one i'm going to call sharpness and again there's a video on this check out the description and there'll be a link to it as well turn off the top layer and now the look and this is where we get that kind of cartoon painterly kind of i guess waxy kind of feel to the image we're going to go to filter noise and reduce noise this is going to bring up reduce noise dialog box let's just move it out of the way and we'll click outside to bring up steve's face now you'll notice that the all the sliders here strength to 10 everything else to zero and when I click and press down I can get the before and after before and after and that gives me the kind of look that I want I'm only going to do this once so we'll click OK I don't want to apply it again that then gives me the kind of look that I want on the skin but when we zoom in we can see if we turn that on and off we've lost some sharpness in the detail areas so to bring back the sharpness we turn on the sharpness layer put a little tick there to bring up the eye icon filter other high pass and i'm only going to use a pixel radius here of one we'll click ok and change the blend mode of this layer to overlay so now when we zoom in we've still got that look on the skin that we want and all everywhere else but we're turning that layer on and off we've brought back some of the sharpness that you can see there hopefully you can, hopefully you can see that on your screen now the final thing when i apply that effect again i tend to think that does tend to flatten out the contrast just a touch so to bring back some of the contrast but not have any kind of halo effect which can happen when we bring contrast in the first thing i'm going to do is create another merged layer so select all edit and we'll go copy merged edit and paste and then i'm going to go to filter uh, sharpen and unsharp mask whoops filter sharpen unsharp mask now let's just bring this up and the settings I'm going to use in here I'm going to put maybe around about 15 in the amount 15 in the radius and leave the threshold at zero and if I do that before and after before and after you can see it adds in just a little bit of a punch the only thing when you're doing this one when we have a high amount and a high radius is to or sorry a low amount and a high radius is to keep the two numbers here roughly the same so what one is make sure the other is in fact I think we can go a little bit higher there so let's go to 20 and 20 there turn that on and off on and off yeah that's pretty good we can see that it's added a nice amount of contrast there's no halo and there's also no color shift click OK zoom out and there we have our final image let's just put these last final layers here into a group and call it ft for finishing touches and i'd probably do this uh, last part here over in lightroom but let's just give it a bit of a crop make sure that we don't have a tick where it says delete crop pixels because you know we're working non-destructive and let's just drag this up to around about there something like that and i'm going to drag this one down just a Above or just onto the coach's head. Let's zoom in and touch. Something around about there and press enter. 
And there you go, the final retouch picture, which is pretty close to the one that I originally shared across my social media and 500px portfolio. In fact, just for a little bit of fun, let's just go to image and duplicate so that we're not going to affect the one we've just been working on. And we'll just flatten all these layers down here because what we can also do is we could actually make this look as if it's a uh, capture from a film, like a movie. So let's just, uh, foreground color is black, grab my crop handles, hold down my alter option key, drag out so we get these kind of uh, area above and below. Transparent area, I'm gonna add a layer just below that and then fill that with black. So there you go, that's how you can quickly make it look as if it's a movie. But getting back to the original picture, there's the out of camera shot, there's the final retouched image. It's just a, a quick video to give you an overview of the retouching steps, how we can combine uh, techniques within Photoshop with plugins, but still keep the workflow non-destructive. So I hope that's really been helpful for you. As always, any questions or comments, leave some uh, in the comment section below. And please continue to support by clicking on the subscribe button uh, and also sharing this channel with other people it's really growing really well and i really do appreciate the support that you guys are giving and hey should you feel inclined click on the like button as well but that's pretty much all i've got for you this time uh, until next week i'll see you soon